How's that feel to be at the final season? I have mixed feelings about it. Mm -hmm. It's been a privilege to be a part of it, but it's also uh, it's sad to see something like this go. It's been yeah. a really positive influence in my life for six years. You seven. must Years. have a family that you've sort of formed with all your co-stars and yeah and I think that'll disperse to some degree as we work on other things but we really created strong familial bonds we really are a, a nice little brother and sisterhood together I, that, that's a group that I won't disconnect from anytime soon if I can avoid it yeah. so um, you guys hang out when you're not working yeah we do we see each other quite a bit Mike Judge must be pretty uh, interesting guy to, to work with, huh? Yeah. Is, is, is he, what does he, you know, how do, how do you work with him? How does that work? Do you, does he bring a lot of... Uh... Alec and Mike are a really great unit together because yeah. they, um, they really complement each other's skills. I think Alec is um, really good at bringing the story and kind of hitting um, a lot of the, in comedy it's not a focal point usually, is the story. And I think Alec brings a lot of the moments that come back around to be funny or poignant that were set up much earlier. I think that's something that his brain likes to unwrap those puzzles and figure out how to do that. And Mike is so incredibly good at tone mm -hmm. and um, where where we need to be tonally to to stay consistent. Um, I think that's something that he's kind of always been good at. If you look at you know um, Office Space or the the you know Beavis and Butthead, the, he's he also has a knack for indie rap music, which I can yeah. appreciate. Really? Yeah. He does really, Mike Judge. Yeah, I think every I think he's picked out every. Uh, rap song that's been over our final credits, the end credits. Nice. Yeah. I didn't know he was so into the the mine. modern hip hop. Oh yeah. Big um, so the show's about a fictional company, a high tech company called Pied Piper. What do we ex now? What's going to happen in the season? Can you can you tell us anything about what's going to happen in the final season of um, Silicon Valley without giving too much away? No, I I, I do think that it ends in a um, in a way that I'm proud of. I think. Um, Alec and Mike really pulled something together because there's so much attention on the finale of a show and critically there's usually a, lo a lot of awareness as to a lot of judgment on how poorly that can and has gone in, in some cases. There's a pressure that I think we all felt going into our final season that this had to be good. Yeah. Um, and I think once I had read the first two or three episodes, it already felt like a whole season had gone by in a way that upped the stakes. Like the, the you can really feel, there's just a density in this season of plot of like what we're going through and the comedy is still ever present, but the, the plot has thickened so thoroughly that by the middle of the season, you're like, holy shit. Uh, this is this is like a whole season has already gone by in three episodes, so I, and and that doesn't stop. I think the way we end the season is, I don't know. I like that it. is interesting like how it. there's there's pressure from, you know, you want to make sure your audience is happy, right? Your fans are happy yeah. with the, you know, that happened with I guess The Sopranos, Game of Thrones, which you were in the final yeah. season of, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you don't want everybody. You, you can't. You feel like well, we can't please everybody though, right? There's somebody's always going to have a problem with. Sure. That. That's which is set up for you. You're not going to like it, but a lot of other people hopefully will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you play a programmer named Gilfoyle, who's uh, uh, pompous and apathetic, but also a practicing Satanist. Sure. Um, how did his this character evolve throughout the six? I don't seasons? know how much he evolved, to be honest. I think the there's a consistency in my relationship or Gilfoyle's relationship with Dinesh that has been really fun to play. Mm -hmm. How's that work? Do you sort of figure some of that out throughout? Like when you're working together with people for so long, mm -hmm. that must be kind of an amazing opportunity, right? To be able to really let things evolve over the years, right? You don't normally get that opportunity as an actor, do you? Um, I mean, I guess television in general gives you that opportunity, but um, yeah, for me, I hadn't had it for more than a, a two season run. Yeah. Um, so this was a lot of fun to get to play, especially with people as talented as 
Kumail and Thomas and Zach. Yeah. How much of the show is improvised? Is there a lot of improv going on with the guys? Or? It, it depends from scene to scene, episode to episode, but um, we're given a fair amount of freedom. Mm -hmm. And I think we've found, uh, season one and two, I think there was a lot more Put, like a lot more Im improvisation and we've found a good middle ground because the writing is so good it's really I find it difficult to want to improvise as much I think there are little pockets that I have but right. as the guy that mostly does one-liners I really only have moments to play with and usually those are written so well that me improvising new beats won't be better than um, what they've landed on in the writers room deadpan delivery is a very hard thing to do. When did you realize? Is it? Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> Is this a, something that comes naturally to you then? Or? I guess so. Yeah. I, I've, I think when I first started doing improv in my early teens or maybe even preteen, uh, I just loved getting a reaction out of people mm -hmm. um, in, in whatever way. Um, and comedy is obviously one of the most obvious reactions to get, but even making people like, because we did drama improv as well, so you would try and uh, instill um, fear or sadness or just uh, any emotion, but laughter is the most fun to get <laughs> as a reaction to anything, so um, comedy is a fun place to play, and deadpan, I guess, came easy to me once I figured out how to do it. You come from an acting family, though you have grew up in L.A. I did, yeah. Did you, uh, did you know when you were young that you were going to... Uh, yeah, I, could, I predicted this. Um, when you saw your mother and father were my diary. actors, right? Uh, my mom is an actress, mm -hmm. and my dad uh, became a teacher. Mm -hmm. He used to sell medical supplies and then realized he didn't want to be a salesman anymore. But, uh, yeah, my, my mom is an actress, and, and she had a business that revolved around acting, so... I grew up going there and probably learning at a young age how to adapt and and do scenes and that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. You moved to Florida for a bit, though. Yeah. Did you like Florida? Did not. No. What did you not like about Florida? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> the weather, you name it. Yeah. Did not enjoy it. Moved there for a year, came back, so I got to get back to, yeah. back to L.A. I was young, too. I think it's a hard time to transplant somebody from all that they know mm -hmm. and expect them to just figure it out. Uh, I was not ready for Florida. Um, I came back after a year and went to the best high school, I think, in L.A. Anyway, um, it's an arts high school called LOXA, Los Angeles County High School for the Arts. It's on the campus of Cal State L.A. And that was such a good experience that I almost turned down the opportunity to do Freaks and Geeks. Really? Just because you didn't want to... Well, if I had... If I had done what I ended up doing, then I would get kicked out of the school. Mm -hmm. So I had two options, stay in the school that I enjoyed or miss too many days by their rules and then have to leave the school. So when you, when you did do uh, Judd Apatow's amazing cult favorite television series, Freaks and Geeks, did mm -hmm. you... And Paul Feig. Yeah. How did... Oh, yes. And how did you, how did you get involved with that? Did they, how did they find you? Or did you I don't know how they found me. Yeah. I was I was existing as a weird, awkward uh, teenager, and somehow they picked me out of a lineup. I got very lucky. Why do you think the show only lasted one season when it is just so beloved? I mean, there was so much talent on that show. Incredible uh, careers uh, were launched, like James Franco, Seth Rogen, Never heard yourself. Of them. Um, Still drawing a blank. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they uh, they didn't. Um, they didn't get it. I don't think it resonated with the people who had the power. But also there's a documentary that talks on this exactly. Yeah. They dig into all that. But there was a guy who was leading the charge to get us canceled, and it was his network. He was running NBC at the time. So. What is it about Judd Apatow? What do you think the magic is that he brings to all of his films that is so unique and makes him so successful? I think he's he has a, a knack for... Um, talent. I think he's, his whole career, he has surrounded himself with really talented, interesting people. Yeah. And he himself, I think, is, is uh, extremely talented as well. But his, I, like, I, I enjoy his taste in other people. Is he, do you think it starts, he notices it in the casting process? Especially with Freaks and Geeks, you were all so young. He must have seen something extraordinary because you've all gone on to become, have these incredible careers. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what he saw. 
this would be a good time to bring him in. And here is <laughs> Judd Apat Apatow. You've worked with him many times since? Yeah, knocked up and um, little things here and there. What, now, you were in the final season of Game of Thrones. How did that happen? I became friends with uh, the guys who created that show. Going back to high school, I like talking about that a little bit. When you were in high school, did you like kind of messing with people? Did I? No, I was yeah. the one who was messed with. Really? I was yeah. the mess e, not the messer. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that's what made you want to be start immediate? messing with people? No, I I, yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> I feel, order that, yeah. I think Silicon Valley is the first time when I've really um, been the one who's jabbing other people, which maybe isn't totally accurate. I think I'm party down. I did it a bit, but um, I play. Don't get me wrong. I play the victim just as well as I play the uh, the other. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.